Hello everyone, my name is Kelly Johnson and this is my screencast summary. So this week we've been learning about participatory culture and the goal of creating participatory culture in education and in our classrooms is to transform students from consumers of lectures and reading and videos to becoming actual creators. So in lecture, Professor Vu mentioned that places online that encourage participatory cultures are spaces for creating content and engaging in a community. I think this is important because, as also stated in our reading, confronting the challenges of participatory culture, participatory culture shifts the focus of literacy from individual expression, so just one person, to community involvement. This is giving students the skills to engage with 21st century technologies like computers and other software, but also meeting like-minded people and participating in a global community. And I think that's really important because those are things that employers are wanting in this job market. They're going to want people who can communicate with a variety of different people from around the world and also people who are competent with today's technology. So one of the websites that we used this week, or the main website that we used in our field work, was Wattpad. And I think it had a great dynamic between creation and community. The creation aspect, of course, was having users create stories and poems and posting them online and sharing them with others. And in community, users can join clubs and they can collaborate with other users who have similar, uh, similar special genres that they like, including fan fiction or poems. Like poets can join on Wattpad and create content together and comment on content, and that's awesome. So something that Professor Henry Jenkins said that was really interesting to me was that people aren't, young people specifically, aren't studying how to do these things. Uh, we learned in our reading about some phenomenal young people who were developing com computer software and creating movies and learning about democracy and what it means to be a good leader, but they didn't learn these skills in schools. They learned by, quote, messing around. And messing around describes just having fun. It's what people in this generation are doing. We're taking videos of our friends and posting them on YouTube or Snapchat, and we're playing video games, and we're vlogging, and we're listening or creating podcasts so that our friends can hear them or so that, that the world can hear our opinion. So some of my reflections, I was definitely a bit on the fence about integrating social media and technologies into classrooms, but after listening to Professor Jenkins, I agree with him in that social media should be welcomed into the classroom. We already live in a world that is saturated by technology. Pretty much everyone has a smartphone and they're using applications. We're going on YouTube all the time and it's in our leisurely time. We're watching YouTube videos. It's all around us. So I think there are a lot of benefits to implementing technology and social media in our classrooms. It's teaching children how to be creative, how to collaborate, and also learning about intellectual property. If you're creating something, you can stop other people from using it or they might need permission in order to use something that you've created, and I think that's awesome. Classrooms could have YouTube, YouTube channels or Facebook discussion groups and they can create hashtags and utilize websites like Wattpad to publish student work and share them with other students from around the world. But I still have some concerns and some questions that I'm sure will be answered as we continue on with this course. How much technology is too much? And at what age do we begin integrating technology into schools? And what happens to traditional methods like paper and pencil if we engage with technology in schools.